Hi, my name is Seth, and I'm a support engineer at NXLog. In this video, I will be going over basic network connectivity and failover with NXLog Enterprise Edition. I will be using a small lab environment consisting of a Windows machine that will be used to generate events, five Linux servers for log collection, forwarding, and demonstrating network failover situations, and finally a Linux server acting as a basic log ingester that will display log data received and act as a mock sim to help us visualize log data. On the left you will see the basic configuration file that I will be using on the Windows machine to generate test events and forward them to the collectors. In the input section I will be using the im underscore test gen module to generate one event every five seconds and then modifying the event with the custom message nxlog is great. In the output section I will be using the OM TCP module for communication with the collectors. It is important to point out though that I could have chosen to use any of the network related output modules available with NXLog such as the OM SSL module. I am specifying a different reconnect delay here with the reconnect directive to override the default network reconnection behavior of NXLog. Without the overriding statement the default behavior is to increase the delay between reconnect attempts doubling with each attempt until a maximum delay of 120 seconds is reached which for this video would be inconvenient. I have also specified the connection addresses of the five collectors with multiple entries using the host directive. NXLog can communicate using both IPv4 and IPv6 protocols with both address types being recognized as data types in NXLog Enterprise Edition. Additionally, host names and domain names may also be used as seen here. For domain names with records listing multiple IP addresses, each address will be attempted during connection and failover situations in a round robin pattern. The primary collector is listed first, with each of the failover collectors being listed after. After losing connection to the primary host and being unable to reconnect to it, NXLog will attempt to make additional connections in a round robin pattern with all the listed hosts. One thing to note is that once a connection is made to a failover host, no further attempts are made to reconnect to other hosts while that connection is active. This includes the primary host, meaning that should the primary come back online, NXLog would not attempt to connect back to it without manual intervention or a network disruption with the current failover connection. Each of my collectors has the same configuration we see here, with the exception of the collector using IPv6 having a different listen address. The collectors are configured to ingest a log, append their hostname and IP address as separate, easily identifiable fields, and then convert the event to JSON before sending it to the mock sim. It is worth noting that the reason NXLog will be started with the sudo command on these servers is that my user account does not have the correct permissions to access some files used in the NXLog directory by default. I will now start the NXLog agent on the Windows machine, which will begin generating test events and begin sending them to the first collector. When starting NXLog, I will be starting it in foreground mode using the dash F argument so that I can see the internal logging messages in the console window. I will also be using the dash C argument, which allows me to specify a different configuration than the one in the default NXLog configuration directory, in this case, generator.conf. As soon as NXLog starts, I can see that a connection attempt is made to my primary collector and is successful and I can also see that events are already being sent, ingested, and transformed by the collector and sent to the mock sim, which we see in the bottom right displaying the total number of events received, as well as the individual log data with some helpful highlighting. Looking at the mock sim displayed log data, I can see the added collector information data mentioned previously. I can see that NXLog is forwarding to my first collector, which has a host name of centOS-collector1, and an IP address of 1.0.1.195. Now that we are successfully sending logs to our first collector, I'm going to simulate a network disruption event by terminating NXLog on the first collector. As I do so, in the console output of the Windows NXLog agent, I can see it has been disconnected, tried to reconnect, and is now proceeding to use the listed failover hosts to establish a new connection. I will now start the second collector. Shortly after starting the second collector, I can see confirmation that the NXLog agent has connected to another collector and is again sending events. I can also see in the mock sim that the host name and IP address of the forwarding collector has changed. NXLog has successfully failed over to the second collector. 
Again, I'm going to simulate another network disruption by stopping NXLog on the second collector. I will now start the third collector, which is using the IPv6 protocol for communication. Because of where NXLog is in the round robin process, we're going to have to wait for it to come all the way back around before it connects to the IPv6 address. Now the Windows agent shows confirmation that it has connected to the third collector. Looking at the mock sim, I can now see the IPv6 address of the agent and the collector. The last failover example is failover when using a domain name and one that may have multiple associated network addresses. If a DNS record for a domain lists multiple IP addresses, all of the IP addresses for that domain will be attempted when trying to make connections and when attempting to reconnect. I have here the domain name dnsrrtest.com, which has two network addresses associated with it, the addresses for our fourth and fifth collectors. Stopping the third collector, and then starting the fourth, I see the disconnect in the agent console window and see that it is now trying to connect with the first IP address of the domain name dnsrrtest.com. It has connected, and again events are being sent. If I now stop NXLog on the fourth collector, I can see NXLog now uses the second IP address associated with that domain and connects with the fifth and final collector. This concludes the overview of basic network connectivity and failover with NXLog Enterprise Edition. If you have any technical questions or related comments, please reach out to us on the NXLog Community Forum or our IRC channel. If you have a support contract with NXLog and are having issues using NXLog, please open a support ticket and we will be in touch with you quickly. For questions on acquiring a support contract or for additional engineer support for your environment or planned deployment, please contact our pre-sales team at presales at nxlog.org. Thank you for your time and have a great day.